Janka, nech sa páči, máš slovo. Thank you, Milo. I am Jana, I'm a community engagement and communication manager for Missing Maps at the organization Maps on San Frontier, globally, not just like at Ibezani, it's the, the Czech office. And it is my pleasure to help with organizing the Mapathons in Czechia and Slovakia. Today, I will start by introducing you to the context that we will map. I have a short presentation for you on the Democratic Republic of Congo. So let me share my screen. Here you can see the country. And in case you haven't mapped it with us yet in Missing Maps project, here you can see where it's situated right in the middle of the African continent. And here is a close-up map of the country where all the pins are representing the MSF project, where you can see that a lot of them are on the eastern part around the lake Kivu, which is between Bukavu and Goma, left of Kigali. And uh, a lot of them are also going upwards in the Ituri province through the North Kivu province and Ituri province. And then there are a few also close to Congo Brazzaville. And here also please uh, notice Lubumbashi in the south, the city. Can you see my moving mouse? Give me a thumb up if you can see it. Yes, I yes, we can see it. Okay, great. So also Lubumbashi, because that's a city close to which we will have the task for ID editor today. And then notice also Bunya at the very end of this row of pins, um, because that's where it will be the second task in Angumu. So here is Kambove. It's uh, not that easy to see. It's a small place, uh, kind of northwest of Likasi, a regional town, and uh, all of it is northwest of Lubumbashi. Uh, it's a pretty forested area that you could notice um, that you are swiping through a lot of forests if you try the map swipe. We recently opened this uh, area for map swipe which is a mobile app that allows narrowing down a large area just to the small parts where people live by having three people like me or you going through it on the mobile phone and tapping on the squares where they see some buildings or something that could be buildings. So that's a way you can actually help prepare for a mapathon. And I just wanted to point out but sometimes the buildings are not too easy to see. Since this is a cutout, well, you can pretty clearly tell where the buildings are, but you can already tell that they could look like trees with this one on the left and that they are actually a natural color. And that's something that you will see also when I show you pictures of buildings. The second task for the more experienced mappers for those mapping in Josum is Angum. And Angumu is a health catchment area bordering the Lake Albert, which is right on the border between the Democratic Republic of Congo and Uganda. And you can see that we have a few projects here, um, mostly directed and managed from Bunya. Um, and this um, top pin is Angumu. And it is an area where a lot of people have moved to being displaced since at least the year 2018, um, because they were forced to flee from their homes due to intercommunity violence and also due to political conflicts and economic crisis. And the number of these displaced people has not ceased to grow. And so with that comes uh, precarious housing, need for healthcare, while well, there are no structures for that. And also, as you will see, one of the issues in the area has been a natural disaster, flooding, uh, which has literally um, flooded some of the buildings um, that they are unusable. Uh, so again, people had to move and also the floods with it bring different health issues. 
such as this one, who can guess what disease this symbolizes? I'll tell you what it means in English. So what it says above is, here is a weapon of mass destruction that nobody is interested in. Can anyone turn on their mic and tell us which disease this is? Malaria? Yeah, correct. So what it says in this small black line underneath is malaria kills close to 2 million Africans every year. Together, let's stop this bloodbath. And malaria is a serious illness that can be fatal if left untreated, but it's relatively easy to prevent it. And also, um, especially if it's diagnosed early before uh, those affected uh, have high fever and they are dehydrated, you know, and, and lose um, a lot of strength, then it can be treated pretty effectively. And as you would expect, it's especially those who are vulnerable and weak, who are most likely to be, um, well, to have serious uh, acute malaria like babies or young children or pregnant women or the elderly. Here's the reason for the mapping as described by our GIS colleague, this uh, cool guy in the middle, uh, his name is Moise. Mapping the Angumu area will allow MSF to plan and monitor and evaluate its emergency malaria project scheduled to start by March, 2022. So it's pretty soon, we need to get on it. MSF teams will be guided by OpenStreetMap data to reach and spray insecticide inside all homes in targeted villages and those in sites uh, of people displaced by the armed conflict and the Lake Albert flooding in the east of this Angumu area. So that's it in a nutshell. Uh, a little bit more about the project. Um, those of you who have been with us for longer have actually experienced this when we met Burundi last spring. So the technique is called indoor residual spraying. And here on the left, you can see a team leader looking on his phone to update the progress and to mark the houses that have been visited in one color and that have been treated with an insecticide, um, which actually gives a long-term protection um, six to nine months uh, against the mosquitoes, um, or mark the houses in red if they were closed and if it could not be treated. And on the right, you can see one of the sprayers. The, the canisters are pretty heavy and um, the areas, at least in Burundi, were pretty hard to reach. So sometimes they went there by bicycles or even on feet and had to coordinate it with the rain season and so on. So that's why it's important to have every house uh, mapped where it is. And then the GIS person places the dot in the middle and those are then the dots on the map using Osment, uh, an application based on OpenStreetMap for mobile phones. And every day this data is synchronized um, and then uh, it gets updated um, for the next day so that the team leader can have a map that's completely up to date for the spraying. Here, I just wanted to show you a few um, people whom we are helping. These photos are from the Angumo area. Uh, this is a mother that, uh, whose baby has been treated in one of our clinics, um, I think for malaria. Um, you can see that they are really modest people uh, who have very little. Uh, this is one of the typical meals, which is essentially just corn flour and, and water and maybe a bit of salt. And uh, I wanted to say a few key points for the mapping uh, to leave you with and then show you a few pictures of the houses. So the objects that we're going to digitize are buildings. And they are both rectangular and round in this area. Uh, the imagery that we're using for the background is Maxar Premium because it's the newest and it's from about 2020, so it's not brand new. And that's a reason why we tasked new imagery for part of the Angumu area, which was covered by clouds. Um, and in terms of the state of the map, there should not be any buildings really in Kamboga because it's a very rural area and we are doing an exploration there about what our projects might be and about the needs, um, assessing what is the situation uh, in contact with the local communities and their leaders, um, but it'll be for public health. And um, 
As for the second task for Josen, uh, basically it is an update and the area has been very well mapped around 2017 by HOT, uh, having a customary imagery, which we don't have access to now. And that means that the buildings that are on the map already are pretty compact um, and pretty well mapped. So some of the tasks actually don't need much mapping, rather checking if everything is there and just adding the missing buildings. And this also means that there is an offset to the Maxar premium, um, but we don't want to align the data to this image also because we have probably another image for part of the area coming in. And so you may try to align the satellite image to the existing data and don't worry too much if there are a couple of buildings that are somewhat off, you don't have to move them one by one just map the missing ones. That's all this info was for Jocelyn. So don't worry if you're here for the first time. Um, and uh, if you have any questions, I will join the independent mapping group. Or you can always ask in the chat. Uh, I imagine some of you are already starting to map or validate. And we're gonna have a look at how the buildings look like. So this is a village. You can see that there are some tarps on top of the houses. Um, but not on top of all of them. Uh, so some houses might be white or blue, uh, like here, for example. But in some cases, it might just be straw color, which is very similar to the ground. So then look for the land use, look for the lighter color area uh, being trodden on, uh, where people walked basically around the houses and for the little paths connecting the different houses. And if you have any questions in a comment to the task, you can always write hashtag managers. Um, if it's a question of technical nature, if it's a question of, you know, is this a building or not, uh, then it's probably best to share within your group. And I encourage you to screen share and learn from each other. And uh, you can also tag us by our OSM names in case you're interested and you're, you know, a long-term member of the community. So I put them here. So again, if it's something that has to do with operations very technically, you can tag, for example, Eureka. If it's a question on um, engaging and so on, then me. Of course, I'm here today, so you, you can take advantage of that as well. And lastly, thank you for helping to protect these communities from malaria. The project on indoor residual spraying in Burundi has been a successful one. And there was talk of implementing it in other areas. So I was quite happy to hear that's what they are planning in this area. And also the GIS guy is really engaged. And I just got a message like an hour ago that he's planning to organize the Mapathon in Bunya tomorrow. So I sent him this presentation and also general intro to Mapathon. And I think it would be great if we can take a picture together or a few actually, since we are on three screens and like wave at them and I send it to him and he shows it to those guys tomorrow.